Hello students and welcome to chapter 5.6 production planning and this is the first video of three in this chapter. So 5.6 falls under operations management. To be clear this is an HL only chapter so SL students do not need to know this chapter. Uh, in this chapter we've got various learning objectives. We're going to look at supply chains just in time just in case. We're going to draw some stock control charts and there's a variety of calculations down here which we're going to look at. So in the first video, I'm actually going to start with the third learning objective, stock control charts. And in the second video, we're going to do the first two learning objectives. I find it a lot more logical to do it in that order, but clearly you can watch the videos in, in the order of the syllabus if you wish. So firstly, um, we're going to define the term uh, inventory or inventory, depending on how you say it. So this is when a business holds stock of raw materials, finished goods and work in progress. Quick thing on terminology, um, this word inventory is the same as the word um, stock. So I tend to use the word stock, but I also use the word inventory. I think inventory is a bit better because stock, we've also got the term stocks and shares where we did that previous in the syllabus, but it's the same word with two different meanings. So I'll try and use inventory, but I might use stock at times. Anyway, so let's say we're a wooden chair production company. Raw materials would be the wood, Finished goods would be the when we finish producing it, obviously. And the work in progress is when we've started producing it, but we haven't finished. So this chair here, uh, we've, we've done the chair, but we haven't actually painted and put the lacquer on it or whatever it needs. Down here, this is a, this is a car. Um, in class, I do a production activity where they make paper cars or whatever. And this is work in progress because it's been folded, but um, we haven't drawn the windows or anything like that. So why do we hold inventories? Well, we need inputs for production, so we need the wood in order to produce the tables. Otherwise, workers and machines will do nothing and they're idle. Work in progress, otherwise the production line stops. So if you're painting the chairs, then obviously you need the unpainted chairs, the work in progress in order to continue the production line. Um, and also we need the finished goods. We need to store finished goods. Otherwise, um, sales may be lost because if customers come along and want to buy the chair and you don't have them, then clearly you're going to lose sales. Now, what I will say in the second video, we're going to look at just-in-time production where we hold lower levels of stock. So um, we'll come back to this later on. Um, this is a balance sheet from um, a business um, publicly available. I mean, you can see um, that they actually break up the inventories into the three things we just talked about. So materials and supplies are raw materials, work in progress and finished goods we've just defined. And you can see that they've got seven, seven billion um, in inventories, with the majority of that being um, the finished good. Um, and the second most being the raw materials. So some balance sheets, when you look at annual reports, will actually itemize the way that their stock or their inventory is actually categorized. So the focus of this video is drawing stock control charts. So stock control charts is an AO2 and an AO4, but it's mostly an AO4 because um, we're going to be drawing these things. So a stock control chart looks like this on the left. I'm going to go through how we draw one of these in a minute. Um, but they're basically a visual aid. We can see it's visual, but it helps a business maintain suitable levels of inventory over a period of time. So you can see from this balance sheet that this business is choosing to hold 7 billion in inventories. It's clearly a large business. Um, and why? So these stock control charts help a business make sure that they, that they have suitable levels of stock. And the key thing is, is you don't run out of stock. Um, and also, you also want to minimize your stock levels. And we'll see that in the next video when we talk about just-in-time production. So you, want, you don't want to hold too much stock, but you also don't want to run out of stock. And those are conflicting things, if you like. So the stock control charts help us balance these two objectives. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw one of these stock control charts. And in order to do so, we need uh, some information. So the question might say something like, draw a fully labeled stock control chart for 12 weeks. You're going to want to draw this on graph or squared paper. You want to do like an accurate drawn to scale diagram. And as always, use a sharp pencil and a ruler to draw these. So you're going to be given certain information. So I'm just going to go through these very quickly, but I think when we apply it, so it's going to be, make a lot more sense. The maximum level is the maximum level of stock that a business can hold. And this is by limited by space. And here in this question, we're going to use the number 500. This might be 500 kilograms. It might be 500 million or whatever. 
reorder level, this is the level of stock that triggers a new order. So when stock goes below 300, then we make a new order. The reorder quantity is the amount that we, we reorder. So when the stock goes below 300, we do a reorder and we will order another 400 to be delivered. The lead time is the time between order and the, the, the delivery of the order. So when you make an order, it doesn't magically appear. We have to wait for it to, have to, to be ordered. In this situation, it's two weeks. If you, for example, if you, if you order from Amazon, um, then it doesn't magically appear there. You normally have to wait a day or a week or whatever. So that's called the lead time. The buffer stock or the minimum is the minimum stock level held in case of emergencies. Um, we don't want to go below that is our objective. And also the quantity used is how much stock we use on average. In this situation, we're going to assume that we use 100 per week. So let's go ahead and uh, draw this. So what I've done is just um, made it a bit more like this. Where am I going to put my head? Put my head down here. So um, I've taken away all the definitions so I can make this diagram nice and big so that you can see. So the first thing we want to do is, sorry, we want to uh, draw the axes. So um, we know that we're going to be doing it for 12 weeks. We want to put the weeks and the time along the x-axis. This may be done in days or months. In this situation, it's weeks. And it says we need to go up to 12 weeks. So I've broken it up into uh, one square per week up to 12 weeks. On the y-axis, you want to have stock levels. I've put kilograms. We don't know what the units are here, but I'm just going to assume kilograms for now. How far do we go up to? Well, we go up to the maximum. We know that the company cannot have more than 500 in stock. So therefore, this is the maximum we want to go up to. And again, I've done like 50 per square. So you want to use a consistent um, number of uh, stock per square, if you like. The next thing we do, we want to label three things on the diagram. We want to label the maximum level. And I've drawn a horizontal line across here. You could do a dotted line if you wanted to. Um, I've done it as a, as, a, as a normal line. Then you want to have the minimum, um, which is our buffer stock, which is 100 down here. Um, I haven't quite got this on the line there, but um, you should get that on the line. I think that's because it's quite difficult to draw diagrams in, in Google Sheets, if you like. Um, and then the reorder level, um, we also want to draw this. Again, when we go below this line, then that triggers a reorder. So that's why I've labeled that there. Okay, next we can start drawing the stock control chart. So we start at 500, and then you can see that behind my head, we use 100 per week. So we start at 500, and after one week, we use 100. So we go down from 500 to 400. Then after two weeks, we use another 100, and we go down to 300. So after two weeks, we've gone from 500 down to 300. Now what happens now? Now we hit this reorder level. So once the stock level gets down to 300, we call up our suppliers or whatever happens, and we say, can you deliver us some stock? But then we have to remember the lead time. The lead time is told is two weeks, and I've labeled that here using this double arrow. So you can see that if they order the stock at two weeks, they have to wait until the fourth week in order to receive that stock. Now we move on to the next one, and you can see that whilst we're waiting for the stock to be delivered, we're continuing to use our current levels of stock. So after the third week, we're down to 200, down to the fourth week, and then we're down to 100. And then we can see that after the fourth week, our stock gets delivered, and we, are, um, we order... We ordered 400, so the stock level goes from 400 back up to 500, back up to the maximum. So you can see that whilst we're waiting for the stock, the stock continues to go down and then goes back up to the maximum. And then what happens is, well, we just repeat the cycle. So we're up to 500, we use 100 per week. In the sixth week, we go down to 300, and again, that triggers the reorder. But the lead time is two weeks, so we're going to have to wait until the eighth week for stock to be delivered. And then hopefully you can see that then we go down to the eighth week, the order arrives, and we get 400, and we go back up to the maximum stock level of 500. And then you can see that the cycle just repeats itself in this diagram. Right, so here's another one. Um, if you want to pause the video, 
and have a go at this, then go for it. Um, and I'll go through the answers in a few seconds. Okay, well, if you didn't pause, um, I'm just gonna go through this anyway. So what I've done here is I've drawn the diagram here. Um, the diagram um, looks a little bit different, but it's basically the same thing. Here we again, we've got months on the x-axis. So the first question was draw the stock control chart, and I've done that. Um, I realized I've forgotten to label the max, minimum reorder level, so I would lose a mark here. So don't forget to do that, remember? Okay, at the beginning of the 12th month, the supplier says there'll be a delay of one month. So how much stock would they have at the end of the 12th month? Oh, I should also say that um, from the question, we actually began at 700. Let me just go back. You can see that the starting quantity level is 700. If the question doesn't tell you, then you should assume that it begins at the maximum. But in this situation, it begins at 700, which therefore means we trigger a reorder immediately. So you can see at the end of the 12th month, um, at the beginning of the 12th month, they start at 400. And there should be a, there should be an order arriving, but it doesn't. So they go from 400, they use 300 per month. So therefore, at the end of the 12th month, they'll have 100. How late would the delivery need to be? Well, they have 400, they use 300 per month. That's all in the question. So therefore, after four thirds of a month, which is one month and one third, they would run out of stock. So the last question was, uh, our stock control charts always as smooth as the one. I mean, when we've just drawn these, they're lovely and smooth and it always goes down to the minimum and maximum. Well, in reality, they don't look as smooth as this because consumer demand is not linear, goes up and down and, and fluctuates. We get late and early deliveries. Maybe the supplier delivers it early or late. And sometimes stock might be damaged. We don't get the full amount of stock. But in this situation, these are still, the stock control charts are plans for the future. And so if the stock control chart has problems, like we're going to run out of stock, then we would do it again. Maybe we order more stock. So the idea of stock control charts is there a plan for the future. Things go wrong, but then we try and mitigate against those circumstances. All right, we're now done with uh, stock control charts, and we've done all of these. In the next video, we'll do just-in-time and just-in-case production. I'll see you then. Thank you.